Greetings, salutations, respect, and oh, wait, you know, pff, come on, man. This is a special episode. We're ranking the Spock's Beard discography. And with me today, I have none other than Sonic Perspectives, Scott Medina. Scott, thank you so much for being here. This is going to be awesome. You got it. Spock's Beard had to be here. I've been, ever since we did a countdown of yes, like a year ago, I've been bugging Scott. Let's do Spock's Beard. And, and here we are. Well, being the slave to numbers that I am, uh, I keep looking at the uh, view count on that yes video, and uh, it's easily my number one video since the channel's inception. So wow. why wouldn't I want to have you back? Wow. Obviously, you're the reason for that. But No, uh, no, no. Obviously, yes is the reason for that. Come on. And we're going to have to redo <laughs> it again now that Mirror to the Sky is out and like refigure the entire thing, right? Yeah, that was a that was a, a little a task that I, I took up last week and did. And uh, I think you should uh, see where I rank it. I think you'd be really interested in that. Yeah. But, uh, you know, the mighty beard, man. I don't know about you, but I was a little bit late. I mean, I heard the light, uh, you know, the beard formed uh, in California by Neil Morris and his brother, Alan. And uh, I... I heard about this band. I, I listened to it. I didn't love it, man. And then I heard the second album. It didn't, it didn't ring my bell. Honestly, it wasn't until I heard Transatlantic's first album. Uh -huh. And then I'm like, oh, wait a second, man. This is Neil Morris guys. Maybe he's got something going on that I went back. And uh uh how, what's your history with the beard like? Well, that's interesting because actually I think it's a similar sort of thing for me because. Uh, I came in at, at the second album, Beware of Darkness, and I tell you that the quirkiness, like of thoughts and stuff, at first I was I didn't take to it immediately. I was yeah. kind of like, what, what? All right, well, the doorway, that's kind of classic prog there, but it took me a little while, um, kind of like you. But then when it set in, man, it set in hard, and now they're like certainly a top ten, no, a top five band of all time for me is, is the Beard, which is saying a lot, you know. To me, it was Neil's voice. <laughs> I mean, I could see the musicianship was there. Yeah. Obviously, you could see they had great influences. Um, wore them on their sleeve, maybe a little bit too strongly. But mm -hmm. um, I, I really think it was Neil's voice that I just didn't like. I, it took me a real long time to connect with it. Yeah. And, uh, you know, once I finally did, obviously, yeah, Neil Morris is probably my favorite modern uh, progressive rock artist and Spock's beard, obviously uh, one of those foundational bands of the third wave of uh, Prague. You know, you, you had a bunch of metal inflected stuff with a little bit of Prague, but there were very few Prague bands with a little bit of that something else. And uh, we kept hearing about Mike Portnoy, you know, talking about this band and finally, putting them on tour with dream theater, but it still just seemed like uh, it was the metal bands that were getting all the love and uh, little old Spock's beard was like the, you know, it was like the little engine that could almost, yeah. I was always rooting for them. And, uh, and then Neil Morse quits the band after six stellar albums. Wow. Uh, that hurt. That really hurt boy. Cause I saw the first time I got to see him live, Neil was still in the band opening up for Dream Theater on that tour. And I, I mean, I love the band at that point, but seeing Neil on stage, I was like, what the hell is this? Yeah. I mean, these guys are going nuts. This, yeah. this front guy is crazy. And I mean, it really just amped up my enthusiasm for the band. So like when, yeah, when he left after Snow, that was a big blow. Hurtful. I mean, didn't even tour it. Uh, pretty mm. abrupt to the world, but, uh, you know, it had to have been just as hard for him as it was for his fans. And he talks about, oh, yeah. you know, how his sales, uh, his music just you know, went off the cliff. Nobody wanted to hear what he had to say. So it was rough for everybody. Mm -hmm. uh, but the beard did go on. Uh, they pulled Indeed. the Genesis and uh, we had <laughs> Nick DiVirgilio stepping up you know, doing what needed to be done and uh, wearing both hats, singing and drumming. And uh, the four albums with him at the helm mm -hmm. sadly don't do as well in my rankings. I don't mm -hmm. want to give anything away here, but uh, excellent albums though. about that era overall. The, yeah, the, the they're, Nick they're, era. they're excellent albums. It's just, I think we all would agree. It's, it's a little more rock than Prague and yeah. I think that came down a lot to Nick. You know, he's a rocker at heart. He's just like, man, I, I want to, I just want to rock out. And, yeah. you know, he took 
he convinced the guys to take control of the band up as the lead man. And uh, I mean, the parallels to Genesis and Spock's six right. albums, the last one being a double album around a you know disaffected youth, and then the lead songwriter leaves the band, the drummer comes out. I mean, it's just, it, it's eerie. Yeah, it is uh, a little eerie. It really <laughs> is. And then, uh, you know, you add in the uh, David Longden connection and, and Big Big Train and how he was almost uh, yeah. a replacement singer. It, it just, it's it kind Kevin of bothers Gilbert, me. Right? I mean, but, yeah, the, the, it goes on and on. There's a lot of synergy here at play. And, uh, you know, for a lot of my uh, subscribers, they love the classic prog and they're just kind of discovering more modern prog. So I'm excited to do this with you and just a little bit more about uh, the band once we get going into the meat of it, because we mm -hmm. all know. Nick DiVirgilio didn't stick around. He had uh, Cirque de Soleil was calling him. He had Big Big Train calling him. And uh, so they had to kind of reinvent themselves all over again. And Nick being uh, that important a character, it took Jimmy Keegan and Ted Leonard to, to fill his shoes. But uh, three albums with this you know, pseudo lineup of the band. Mm -hmm. uh, what is going on with them now? Have you heard anything? Well, you know, I had I still was strong in the faith after Noise Floor came out, the last album that was 2018. Yeah. Um, Nick came back just to drum studio musician uh, officially on that, but he did do some live shows with the band uh, that I caught that were phenomenal uh, at that point, drumming with them. And then, um, you know, I thought I thought it would continue. I thought by now we would get something out, but as time well, was thought, really weren't there plans with uh, Mike Thorne from Saga? He played with them. Um, he played several gigs with them or okay. tours with them. Uh, I saw those on Cruise to the Edge. He, oh man, right. Mike knocked it out of the park. Oh, Did man. He? Barefoot. He was just killing it. And so that was exciting. But, yeah. you know, now as time has gone on, uh, Rio's come out with his solo album. Uh, so the, some tour dates were scrapped, partly because of COVID and stuff. But right. I think my... I'm just conjecturing here, but my... <laughs> From what I'm sensing here, I think it's primarily Alan just isn't really into, I mean, it takes a lot, I think, to get him to move back into the band because he's he's got full time career and, and company yeah. that he runs. Um, and at the same time, you've got Pattern Seeking Animals that that started and then Rio did his solo album with Alan, a lot of the members on it. So man, at this point, really, the only thing I was just musing about this the other day, and I hope that. Neil will pull it together like he did in 2016 and do a little Spock's reunion, maybe yeah. for a Morse Fest. Maybe they even do a, a final tour or something just to kind of give closure on it. That's yeah, what that'd, I'm, that'd that's that's what I'm hoping for as a Spock's fan, but I'm not holding out a lot of hope at this point for another album. I yeah, mean, well, you know, you somebody. brought up the 2016 where they played the snow shows, but that they were also kind of supporting uh, the greatest hits album, which had uh, the Falling for Forever track on it, which right. had every member of Spock's beard past and present on it. And it was absolutely incredible. So I think all fans would love to hear a whole album kind of along those lines right. would not be uh, complaining at all. Anyway, the mighty Spock's beard, it's hard to believe, but uh, all these years, they've only got 13 studio albums out. So what we're going to do today is I'm going to have Scott uh, give me his number 13 and then I'm going to rebut and then we're going to kind of lay it out on a tier chart. And uh, so Scott, what do you Ooh. have? at number 13. All right, strap in kids. This was hard. Uh, I mean, yeah, it Spock, is. It is one hard. of my favorite bands of all time. This is not like, easy. It, it pains me to put something at the bottom. I honestly. know. I want to know what you got though. And, and it surprised me because when this album came out, I thought, oh, Spock's is back. Uh, this is going to be one of my favorite Spock's albums. But when I went back and listened again, I was kind of like, you know, as, as a whole, the album doesn't really excite me. I don't go back and want to listen to it. Uh, so that is why the ninth Spock's Beard album is my number 13. It's just called correct. Spock's Beard. It's self-titled. Um, and the reason I loved it when it came out, it starts with On a Perfect Day, which I think might be the best track of the Nick era, of the second era of Spock's, or at least one of the top ones. 
What a song. I mean, if it's they a top out, 10 box beard track, period. Any yeah, era. if this had opened um oh. the Feel Euphoria album, like yeah. everyone would have been won over and be like, oh my god, Spox didn't oh, go yeah. away. Even yeah, that did. song and and the next one, that skeletons at a feast. You're, I just love that one too. So you're thinking, yeah. oh my god, Spox is back hardcore. Right. But you're right, man. Going back, I I I really thought that I liked this album better than it, the two that came before it. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was only this weekend that I decided that that was not true. I was blinded by those first two songs, man. <laughs> totally really my was. experience. I go back and I'm like, uh, I can't even remember how a lot of these songs go. I, I mean, with your kiss. I mean, there's some good songs on here. Hereafter is really right. unusual for them. And I like it. But uh, by and large, I just I'm not drawn to to listen to this album beyond those first two tracks. Yep. yep. It's a little forgettable. And uh you know, it's it's still Spock's beard, regardless of which era, which means if there is an epic or some kind of sweet, uh, I'll probably be judging it real you know closely in terms of how I'm going to rank the album. And that as far as the mind can see, sweet, uh, that four part sweet just is not great. Right. I mean, it's it's it doesn't compare to some of the other little mini sweets that uh, that came out before and that hurt its score for me. Mm -hmm. Um it's you know it's a good album if this were any other band but uh wow i can't believe we agreed on something so did That's did you good. rank it as your 13th album yeah well, let's see this is what we're gonna do here let's see if okay. we can figure out the tier ranking oh look at that hey we got it okay so <sighs> where is it gonna go now where do we want it to go um well, again, we were talking about this before. Is like, is this relative to each other, Spock's beards? Like, <laughs> if it were relative, you'd have to put it down there. But I would never say that that's a two and a half star album in yeah. general. I can't do it, man. I can't do it. I can't <laughs> do it. I'm, I'm, I think I'm just gonna leave it there. Okay, fair uh, enough. I can. It agree feels right. Uh, yeah. yeah, I was gonna do a two and a half on it, but you know those first two songs are so good. So good. That, yeah, let's we can't we can't play that game. <laughs> All righty, so we actually have agreement on something. All right, we, uh, this is where the agreement ends. <laughs> I'm I'm pretty sure that's gonna be true. And just so you know, uh, uh, Prague Archives had this tenth in uh, in tenth out of thirteenth. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So they're, they're wrong as usual. Not so we're going to go on to uh, number 12. Number now. 12, Scotty, number 12. number 12. All right, I'm bringing out the boxing gloves right here. We go to the Ted Leonard era. Oh, no, oh, no. I think I know. Third era. Oh, oh you, no. know where, you know oh, where I'm no. going. Oh, man, hold on to your horses. That's right. Yeah. The Oblivion Particle is in the Oblivion for me on the Spox Beard thing. And uh, again, it's a, it's a great album. There's a yeah. lot to love. I mean, Tides of Time is just... Oh. What a song that is just amazing. I think uh, Stan Osmus. That's uh, probably my favorite Stan song. And and one of the, yeah. one of the few that he wrote all by his little old self, too. Yeah, so. wonderful. Wow. And I love, I think it's the closing track, Disappear, is just oh, sumptuous. Love it. But, you know, a lot of these songs, the longer songs, they, again, is that like, I just don't want to go back and listen to them. I think John Bedgehold, it just, there's something that lacks heart on this album for me. It just doesn't have a yeah. lot of heart to it. Whereas I think something in the pattern seeking animals formula changed around, especially the second and third album there, they started creating a lot of more colors and heart and, and just this album, it's just, it, it's okay. But now after the previous one, it was a bit of a letdown. And I think the band was scared. They were like the brief nocturnes had such a huge response. I think they felt a lot of pressure and um, you know, that that's my sense. What's your sense? Yeah, uh, Brief Nocturne certainly uh, set the bar pretty high. And uh, yeah, maybe there were some expectations for the band. Um, but uh, I think you brought up something really interesting in that uh, you prefer the second and third pattern seeking animals over the debut. Um, and, and to me, there's something about the cold and clinical, uh, technical... Uh -huh. Uh, pop of the first album that I really, really prefer. And I just adore the Oblivion Particle, man. To me, <laughs> you know how I am about Bennett Built a Time Machine. I think it's one of my 10 favorite songs 
yeah, that, I've ever heard in my entire life. I mean, God we're all rooting that. for Jimmy Keegan getting on lead vocals on that one. What That's a great, great lead vocal turn as well. It's not like, you know, yeah. he'd been waiting around and he delivered a, you know, a turd. This was outstanding, man. And I, mm-hmm. I, I, where's my Jimmy Keegan solo album now after hearing him sing lead on that? Oh, just yeah. love it. Minions amazing. You it brought is. up uh, Tides of Time. Just fantastic. I really like A Better Way to Fly. I really like the center line. To me, those songs just <laughs> connect and resonate with me for some odd and bizarre reason. I absolutely adore the Oblivion Particle. Where do I have it? You have it way up there, I bet. I have it at seventh, man. Yeah, that's I have what it I would have thought. Seven. Yeah. So, you know, I dig it a lot. Um, but uh, I think I'm, I'm probably going to... I don't know. I might get in a, a trouble putting it up any higher than you probably won't let me give it a four, will you? No way. No way. Ah, you bum. Okay. <laughs> all right. All right. You know, this is this is a capitalism, this is compromise. Yeah. This is democracy. We're uh, we're 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 doing this in a the spirit of collaboration, and I Thank will you. acquiesce. I'm proud of yeah. you. But I really do love the Oblivion Particle. I think it's a great record. That's uh, awesome. Uh, the band will be yeah. really happy to hear that. That's, that's <laughs> great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So coming in at number 11 on mm. the Spock's Beard Hit Parade. Okay. What do you got for us, Here's my choice. It's number eight, Octane. Okay. It okay. is okay. number 11. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. And this... um. You know, again, I'm, I I really get suckered in with the with the opening track. That's really important to me. Yeah. And this opens with the ballet uh, ballet of the impact, and with just those mellotrons. And right away, I'm just like, oh, that's so good. Yeah. And I just love that. Um, she is everything is one of the best. You know, Nick moments, and then Alan's guitar solo, just killer. Uh, and NWC. Nick wrote this yeah. instrumental. Oh, what a great NWC. Track. It kills oh, me every time I hear oh. it. It's so freaking good. Yeah, yeah. He, I, he, I knew, I knew he had a little bit of rush in him. I mean, that just is just such an amazing track. And you know, yeah. we were talking about the extended suites. I guess this album's supposed to start with the uh, uh, a flash before my eyes, which is supposed to be some kind of suite of songs. Yeah. This actually works. <laughs> I mean, and that's the beauty of it all. Yeah. This might have been like the first moment that you realize, hmm, maybe that Dave Marrow's John Bagel the songwriting team, there might just be some pure magic in, in there mm-hmm. because that is just incredible. Yeah. Uh, but it's just not as consistent um, as I wanted it to be. Uh, yeah. Once you get past NWC, you know, it's you got what uh, there was a time in the planet. Some those are fun, but uh, it doesn't. Yeah. It, it doesn't watching feel the, watching the tides pretty good. I, uh, I like it, and but yeah, it felt a little bland. Yeah, uh, like you said, it was more rock, less prog. Mm-hmm. Uh, but when the the moments that are really high and peaking on Octane are actually way better than I thought. Um, yeah, I'm still not. It's still not my favorite album by them, and they were certainly still trying to find their footing in the post Neil Morris world. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, I have that you? at number 12. Number 12. Okay. Uh, yeah. So we were pretty close on that. Yeah. I had 11. You had it at 12. All right. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. And, and I kind of had a feeling that that would be the case on that. Yeah. So let's see. What do we want to do on that? Do... <sighs> yeah. Three stars. Seems yeah. right. Yeah. That feels about right. Okay. <laughs> All right. Let's go. What's up? What's up? Number 10. Damn. Number 10. Then here it comes. It's the resurgence. It's the rebirth. It is the second era. Yeah. Coming in. Feel yeah. euphoria. Look at those colors coming in there into that drainage swamp. Isn't um, that beautiful? Boy, now th- this was the moment. You know, this is like your uh, trick of the tail moment, right? It's yeah. like you're going to judge everything yeah. on the first sound. This is your drama moment. You know, it, it's yeah. like. What what's gonna happen here? Neil is gone, and I I tell you, in my opinion, they blew it by opening up this album with Onomatopoeia. Yeah, it just that it, that track I don't even think should be on the album. It should be really? maybe a bonus track. I'll, it's one of I'll, those Nick. It's one of those Nick rockers, and yeah. it's the band just saying, 
all right, we're taking control and we're doing things our way. And I think that just alienated a lot of them. But when we get to the bottom line, the second track, I'm like, oh, now, that now here's something. awesome, man. Here's something. And for me, I mean, the title track, Feel Your Four, I thought that was pretty badass, actually. Yeah. It was it was different, but it worked. It's cool. And one of my favorite, this will surprise you, one of my favorite Spock songs or Nick songs is Shining Star. Love I just it. think it's it's a beautiful pop hit. Um, carry on. The, the thing is that the epic, you know, the epic, a guy named Sid, it, yeah. it was okay. It had Sorry. its moments, um, but it, you know, it, clearly we could see right away that it's not living up to the Neil epics. Yeah, yeah. It was uh, it was a little soft, and like you said, this was the moment. This was the trick of the tail moment. This was the drama moment. And I think I like Onomatopoeia a little bit better than you do, but boy, it sure tasted different than anything that came before. They were clearly trying to let their fan base know that Neil ain't here anymore. There's a new sheriff in town. This is a whole <laughs> new thing. And uh, I liked it. I didn't love it. But yeah, uh, uh, the bottom line, such an amazing track. I mm -hmm. you almost think you're listening to Trent Reznor or something. And then the title track is great. You know, that guy named Sid is, you know, it's, it, it's all right. But this album, you know, unlike A Trick of the Tale or Drama, which felt truly collaborative, a band like, Hey, we're we're in trouble here. We lost our main guy, so let's circle the wagons and all chip in. This felt like a Nick solo album. Yeah, I won't go that far. I won't go that far, but they certainly didn't find just a defining new sound that won in all the old fans and brought them somewhere new. That's what they wanted to do. They wanted yeah. to go more lean on that rock, right? Prog rather than prog rock, right? And it just, I think, it backfired a little bit. Um, but it is, and they did this quickly. This came out yeah, less yeah. than a year after Snow, so they Quit were around, yeah. they were hot to prove themselves and not let uh, too much stagnation form. And that was probably smart. I mean, you want to keep it going. They definitely had a big uh, uh, amount of momentum when Snow came out, so I can certainly see why they wanted to kind of strike while the iron's hot. But right. maybe, just maybe, uh, they would have been better served. If they would, uh, you know, maybe spend a little bit more time cooking up something a little bit more interesting. But, I, I, you know, I don't hate this one. I give them I give them props. What do you think about that one right there? I, I can agree with that. What what was this year? Um, third from the bottom. Uh, yeah, I had this at uh, my number 10. All right. Yeah. Yeah. That was my number 10. So. Sweet. OK. Which is. uh. Okay. Yeah. Where are we at now? Number nine, right? Number nine. Number nine. I'm going to go with the last Spock's album, perhaps ever. We'll find out. Could Noise be. Floor. Could be. Which, which I thought actually ranked a little higher in my list. But when I went back recently and listened to it again, it was starting to veer more toward the Oblivion Particle. Just like, all right, this is... This is, a, this is good. They're good songs. Nothing stood out. My favorite track on this actually is the uh, the Alan Morse track. So this is Life, which is a very psychedelic Beatles, yeah. Beatles kind of thing. I just love it. I, and the whole album is really strong. It's very good. I'm not going to uh, grade things on the bonus disc, but I will just mention the bonus disc on here has four really decent tracks as really well. Really good tracks, yeah. Yeah, so it's it's a good solid album. If this if this were to be the last Fox Beard album, I think they went out on a good noise floor note. Yeah, I probably had the opposite with this in that I really didn't like it <laughs> at mm -hmm. all, except for Box of Spiders, because you know, whenever a keyboard player does a you know a spidery sound in the keyboard <laughs> track, I'm probably gonna dig it. The rest of it just kind I I wasn't loving, um, but in preparation for this video, Scott, I was listening to this you did your homework. quite a bit, and I, I really didn't dig this one, man. I think yeah. it's fantastic. I have it at number nine also. Um, yeah, To Breathe Another Day is so good. Um, I really love So This Is Life. Uh, uh, one So Wise, another Stan song. That's really great. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I mean, they've obviously done better albums, but like you said, if this is in fact the swan song, they could have gone out on a way sour note because having Nick back, even just as a session guy, 
it feels right, you know, mm -hmm. and it, it maybe gets a few bonus points for that. But as a result, um, how are we feeling about? This? I'll keep it at myself. I'd say the three and a half range. Yeah, I think that may feel about right. Okay. So now, now we're getting into some meat and potatoes, man. Oh, no, we got eight. Oh, yeah. oh. Okay, that's better. <laughs> we up to the eighth now? I believe we are at number eight. And this is when eight becomes 10. Yes. Okay. Okay. We go like that. This is the much beloved uh, peak, high point, apex of the Nick era. Uh, I think everyone agrees that this is the best of the four that came out with, with Nick at the helm. And they went to longer tracks. They uh, progged out. Um, Neil even uh, co-wrote The Emperor's Clothes, which I love. That's, that's like a great a, song. Such a clever, fun song. I mean, I don't yeah. know who wrote all the lyrics, but that's really fun. Yeah. And, uh, I think Nick did a fabulous job with his with his epic from the darkness. Um, so many parts that I love. I mean, there's just there's a lot of great songs on here. Let's just face it. Yeah, this was clearly aimed at uh, trying to win back. Uh, you know, part of their audience that they had lost. Uh, just even having Neil a, a, having a co-write on here kind of pricks the old, you know, ears <laughs> up, gets you listening. But, uh, you know, up until this weekend, I really would have thought that uh, uh, the, the Nick albums got progressively better and better and better. Uh, as I found out uh, that, you know, self-titled really was a step backwards, but the trajectory was still there. Mm -hmm. This is the best uh nick led album by far the epic tracks feel epic they're really fun the edge of the in between is great mm -hmm. i mean the jaws of heaven is cool and you mentioned uh, from the darkness the nick uh the nick epic they're all great so i mean yeah they yeah. are this is I mean, this is what you want from it's kind of there. ironic that he ran away to the circus after this one you know that's, it's like he, he left he left on a high point you know which he is did. cool he did and, uh, you know, had he stayed, the, the future might have looked uh, pretty decent. Yep. But you have 10 at number eight, which is, uh, huh, interestingly enough, exactly where I have it, Kimo Sabi. All right. Well, are we going to elevate this to the four-star level? Is, does it deserve? I, I think it does. Uh, I think most Spox fans would say it definitely yeah. does. Yeah. Yeah. I can't uh, – I really can't imagine a world – where Spock's Beard 10 gets any lower than four stars. So, yeah, let's uh, let's leave it there. And right. now we're at number seven. Man, these records are getting so good here. So good. So, so good. good. <laughs> and, uh, and this, I mean, even though Nick left at a high point, where they might have gone would have continued up. Well, guess what? It continued up. Ted came in, and I was skeptical. I didn't really at that time know Enchant, and I was just like, oh, they're getting a third singer. I... I mean, how how many hits do we have to get uh, as Fox fans for this? And um, and then they came out with this gem, a brief nocturne. Is just, I mean, this blew me away. Every track, there is no filler at all, killer on this album. Uh, Neil has two co-writes. Um, you know, most impressively, the Waiting for Me. But John Begghold comes out with. Uh, something very strange wow what a song uh they redo ted leonard's submerged which is like one of my favorite pop songs from spock's beard it's just incredible i mean every track on here is amazing it's a winner i mean any of them that starts out with hiding out uh is is probably going to be a pretty good record just checking on spotify that is uh their number one song on spotify wow Sweet. Which kind of surprised me a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, and bringing Ted into the band, I mean, I've got, it's almost a little bit like Kansas meets Spock's beard in some yeah. places, you know, which is a good thing. Well, let's be honest. As much as we love Nick DiVirgilio, one of the greatest drummers alive, one of the greatest singers you want to have in a band. I mean, Nick is the best out of the three. The Nick is the best singer. I mean, it, it, it's, yeah. it's incredible, but still. It's insane, but... Yeah. <laughs> Did he fit exactly what us fans wanted from Spock's beard? And uh, I thought the answer was yes until this album came out. I realized, no, Ted Leonard's the answer. Oh, <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, he fit Spock's beard like a glove. And like like we were saying, it, the album starts 
with a Ted Leonard song. And again, just announcing to the world, yeah, the, the beard is back in a big way. And uh, this album is just great. I think it's perfect from start to finish. You you know, Afterthoughts, so much fun, oh, yeah. something oh, yeah. very strange. John Bagel really showing the world, uh, you know, because I, you know, his early songs, like on, you know, the first couple uh, post Morris albums didn't really ring a bell for him. They weren't fantastic. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. just something happened over time where John yeah. Bagel's songwriting got so good. And this was this was one of those moments where you realized, I don't I, I think he's bigger than the beard. And you could almost predict that uh, uh, pattern seeking animals might actually happen. Oh, and interesting. Such a yeah. talent. Uh, yeah. I love this album. I have it a little higher than you do. Uh, let's see here. I have it at number five. Right on. I'm not going to argue with that. Yeah. Yeah, I do. I have I have this at five. So let's see. Let's see how we want to put this up on the tier ranking. Oh, well, man, it's going to be hard for me to put it. I'm, yep. Yep. Got it. I, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I got some weight around here. I'm going to pull a few strings and see if I can get that at the four and a half mark. Absolutely. Cool. I'm not cool, arguing. Cool, cool. So now. Are we at number six already? We are. And I mean, really, that's yeah. the only reason that Brief Nocturnes got in at seven. And I think I think the reason is obvious. There were six Neil Morris albums yeah, and we're at number six. I was just going to say, um, yeah, that's really weird. I did have one uh, non Morris album in my uh, in my top six. I'm, I'm looking Very forward strange. to seeing uh, which one it surpassed. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Which one of the six was? Let me let me look back. Uh, you know which one it was. Come no, on. I, I don't. I don't. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to find out. Okay. okay. Because my, so, my, next and, pick, my next pick is going to be controversial, I think, for a lot of spots. I think it right? might be. Yeah. Yeah. Number six, I'm coming in with the debut of The Lights. You and know, not as controversial for me. Uh, guess what I have The Light at? Seven? I have it at number six. Oh, oh at number six. All right. There you go. I do. I do. <laughs> yeah. So, and you know, uh, I what are your uh, reasons for not uh, pontificating over this thing and wanting to, you know, canonize it and making it the greatest thing since sliced bread? Uh, I just don't think it's their best record and I don't think it's even close. Um, no, no there's, and there's no Rio. <laughs> well, there's no Rio. And um, I mean, I think just more people love the title track than I do. I, I really like it. It's fun. But I, I came to this album actually later on. Yeah. Because I started Beware of Darkness and I kept going and I didn't come to it later. And at that point, I was just like, well, this is a really fun, one-off, quirky um, epic. But the real reason I love this album is uh, Go the Way You Go. To me, yeah. that is just one of the top Spox Beard songs yeah. ever. One of the best live songs ever. Yep. And I'm just in love with that. And actually, On the Edge is the other song that I really love. I love it, too. I think The Water and the Light are the two weakest songs. They're the long <laughs> ones. But, yeah, Go the Way You Go and uh, that last song, really good. But uh, it it felt like there was something missing. And uh, I did hear the second album. I heard the first two. And uh, it didn't. It, like I said, I did not listen to Spock's Beard again until after the first Transatlantic album came out, and uh, and then I went back and listened to Snow and and Five, and yeah, mm -hmm. the albums we're gonna get to in a minute. But I I, I love the light. I just think they uh, they would get a whole lot better. That's the thing. Uh, really, really fast, and yeah. That's and you thing. mentioned a good um, not even better big reason why the lack of Rio, and I think they just needed a little more maturing. You know, yeah. they weren't quite there yet. So um, I'm going to give it four. Yeah, uh, I'm not going to argue with that. Okay. Oh, yeah, this tier ranking is looking pretty good. Pretty <laughs> solid. All right. So no, no, that's too big. That's, that's too, <laughs> that too much face there. man. That's no. scary to me. Number five in the countdown. Number five. Mine is Day for Night. Yeah. Which I... I the more I listen to this, the more I absolutely adore this album. And it might surprise you, but it pains me to put this at number five because wow. if if it weren't for my love for the other albums, I would put this higher because every so I think this is just quality album. A Crack the Big Sky is one of my favorite Spock songs. Also, it's just yeah. impeccable. 
I mean, they even come in with a searing sax solo in it. It's just, and and the the epic, you know, which is just a bunch of excellent tunes strung together. I mean, everyone. I, I, I just love, I, I think some Spox fans consider this a weaker one. Maybe this is the yeah. one you have lower down in your score. But yeah. but for me, it's just a fantastic album. Well, I have it at number nine. Woo! And uh, uh, you'll be happy to know that Prague Archives has Day for Night at number 11. What are they thinking? Yeah, yeah, what number eleven. And uh, I mean, gibberish know, is just too good to be down at number. Gibberish 11. is fantastic. I love it. Uh, and crack the big sky. Yeah, yeah. you mentioned it's one of your top ten Spock Beard uh, tracks. Yeah. I, yeah, it's it's terrific. But I think it's the healing colors of sound, like you said, the the little sweet that ends it. And mm -hmm. being a prog guy, I always wait disproportionately how I'm affected by the epic. That's mm -hmm. how the album's kind of getting scored. I never connected with it. I love, uh, you know, I love a couple tracks on here, but uh, to me, this is by far the the weakest of the Neil Morris uh, mm -hmm. led Spock's Beard albums. So, Interesting. Um, All right. You really love it, so that's that's saving it a little bit. I love. I mean, that title track. Come on, man. That's like so classic, Neil. Um, yeah, give me at least four stars. I mean, I would give it more than four stars, but I know this is a compromise moment. So. Yeah, yeah. This is this is one where I'm pulling, yeah, pulling yeah. rank. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, what do we got? We got four to go. We got four. Right? Yeah, we Top do. We four, got four. The final four. Yep. Oh, yep. And I, I just, here. I'm this is gonna be really curious because you know, looking at my notes here, I, I don't even know what order I actually put them in. I gotta look at my other notes here. I have no idea. They're so good. What do you got at number four? Yeah, two through five for me just are interchangeable. So right now, today, my number four is kindness of strangers, which could right. which could be higher. Uh flow again, flow is kind of my favorite box tune um or at least top three spox tunes i just love that and that was a really early i think one of the earliest ones that neil wrote and he co-wrote it yeah. with someone else too um but just every song is so good and complex and quirky and edgy and just masterful it, it's what an album it's it's fantastic it's uh it's my favorite spox beard album today all right <laughs> Today I have it at number one, Woo! Um, and the primary reason is is after Transatlantic's debut, and I went back and I re-listened to Spock's Beard, and I was starting to fall in love with them. The first song that really got me, that that just gripped me and wouldn't let me go, was the Good Don't Last. I just love every second of that song. It's just yeah. perfect to me. And then you get the shorter tracks, which are great. And then you get, you know, something for everybody. You got June in there. So, you know, your wife can have something to sing along <laughs> with. And then you get Harm's Way and the Flow. It's just a perfect album. Yeah. I love this thing. Um, yeah. Yeah, man. It's that, just, thing on, it, that thing on Flow with, you know, especially the outro with Alan Morris going on that lead. That sort of Steve Hackett almost lead yeah. with the keyboards. I'm like, that could just, you could do an extended version 20 minutes long of him playing that forever, and I would just be in ecstasy. It's oh, yeah. I'd, I'd, I'd buy that live album. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, boy. This is getting hard here. Yeah. Um, up there. Get it up there, buddy. It's got to be at least four and a half, right? No, it's got to be five. Come on. Are you, are you okay with that? Totally. Okay. Okay. I mean, to me, almost all of the Neil albums can be number five. That's yeah. Hard, I mean. hard to argue with that. Hey, good, okay. Good deal. Good deal. That was number four. I think Jeez. that's something I just got to say. It's like as good a band as as Box was for albums seven through thirteen. It's like there is just something so special about the Neil era. Yeah. That I mean, and as much as I love Neil Morris band and everything that he did in his solo career after that which is almost kind of hard to compare with Spock's beard for some right. reason It's there's just something golden for me about those first six albums that is just unique. And just, I can't, I can't listen to it enough. It just gets me every time. It just well, to really me, there was like a, a, a whole different spirit going on. Cause at that time, you know, late, uh, 
90s, early aughts when I was really listening to them a whole bunch. And I was also listening to that little band in Sweden called the Flower Kings. And the Flower Kings always felt like it was just Royna, you know, dictating the terms of everything. Right. Spock's beard felt more like, yeah, they had a similar genius in Neil Morris, but he was actually listening to people mm-hmm. a little bit more. He actually listened to his brother a little bit mm-hmm. <laughs> and Royna chased his brother out of the band. Right. Uh, you know, and Spox so I, has like the consistent, you know, Flower Kings kept changing their drummer, but Spox yeah. has got NDV there, who is like an amazing singer. He's a Genesis, like devotee, and he's just, he's the man, you know? Yeah. I mean, so. yeah, you kind of want Nick in your band. Um, I once heard, uh, you know, uh, a manager say that uh, the most precious thing in the rock industry was the uh, rock drummer who can sing the high harmonies. And, uh, <laughs> you know, yeah. that's exactly what you want. That's exactly yeah. what you get. Um, and, yeah. and, and it's that special chemistry that, that Spock's had during the Neil Morris era for sure. We're at number three, man. Number Let's three, see. It's just going to keep coming this time. It is Beware of Darkness, my entry to the band. And, yeah. and I mean, basically, this one has the doorway on it. And that's like all I need to say, because that's just what a perf- perfection of Prague epics or mini epics that that is. But yeah, it doesn't get I love the other better. ones. I mean, Walking on the Wind, there's another one. Boom. There's your there's your Siberian cat true right yeah. there. It's like just the the perfect nine minute song waste away and i really love time has come i i I just love the grittiness of it and that edginess that neil brings wow i think that might be the most underrated track in the spock's beard catalog absolutely really anybody talking about it no when they're talking about you know the important tracks from the beard uh this album is just amazing as i was going back through it and just realizing the huge improvement to me, at least over the debut, Mm -hmm. they just sound tighter. They sound uh, like a band that had a million different ideas. Like they were just exploding. Like you could almost see the steam coming out uh, and the space between the instruments. This is a band just on fire. Mm -hmm. And uh, Oh man, the doorway you mentioned already. Come on, man. It doesn't get a whole lot better than that track. Um, I just, yeah, I, I love this album. I had it at number four, uh, but, you know, like all the uh, all the Neil, Neil Morris albums, forget about it. They're all oh. just amazing. Yeah. Five, just get it up there. Yeah, just get it over with. Yeah. It needs to happen. I'll, I'll tell you, Scott, I, I might have mentioned this to you before, but definitely a highlight life experience for me was on Cruise to the Edge, getting to sing lead vocals on The Doorway and my band was Randy George on bass, um, Prague Nick uh, on drums, Alan Morse on guitar, and Nick DiVirgilio on acoustic guitar and backing vocals. And I, I got to sing with that band, and it just was, like, incredible. Do we, do we have that video still? Was there a video of that? I know some of that I, stuff. I, I, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll put a little, oh, I don't man, know, I'll put a little uh, excerpt of that. That's awesome. That had yeah. to have been a lot of fun for the uh, for the late night attendees. Yeah, crazy totally. cruise to the edgers, man. Well, you know this is interesting to me because uh, you know, uh, you've got probably you know, probably most people's uh, favorite Spock's Beards albums at one and two, but I honestly don't know in what order you have them. So I'm really interested in seeing. Uh, uh, clearly, you think one is just unassailable and. Uh, you know, the others are uh, others are just masterpieces. So what do you have at number two? Yeah. And this will be a lot of people's number one. But for me, it is number two is the closing Morse album, Snow. Okay. That is just, you know, unbelievable. I'm I'm, I'm wearing the, um, the Morse Fest version here uh, of it when he brought the band back together to play it live. And I, I listen to this. I'm just like. I, I love a good song. I love a good, as much as I love epics, I also love short songs that are really well done. And this is just filled with it. Song yeah. after song, just some are rocking. And I mean, I, I just love the um, Freak Boy songs. Those are just really nasty and great. But like Fourth of July and just like the overtures are just everything. And then there's the anthems and there's the sweet songs. It's It's got it all. Unless you hate... Um, 
you know, uh, theme thematic stories like this, I, I don't see how you couldn't love this one. I know people like to make the uh, comparison to The Lamb Lies Down on Broadway uh, meets maybe the the movie Snow or what yeah. was that called? Powder. Powder, <laughs> <was that>? totally. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, you know, this thing has its own personality and uh, it's it, it just really feels like Neil had a very clear vision on this thing from start to finish. And uh, it's really hard to do a double album, a concept album with recurring themes and not have it feel, you know, a little like retreads. Oh, man, we heard this reprise again. Uh, but when Wind at My Back comes uh, comes up again at the end of the album, um, you know that you're listening to something really, really special and timeless. And uh, yeah, it's, it's masterful. I wouldn't change a note, really. I have this as my number three. Spock's Beard album, right. but I think it's pretty safe to say that uh, this one here is a five-star album, if ever there was one. <laughs> it's absolutely perfect. I yeah. love it. So, yeah, yeah we've got uh, <laughs> we got one left, man. I wonder what you got at number one. Obviously, it's my number two. Good, um, good. Yeah. And, uh, that to me, it's just head and shoulders. And unless you're a real devotee of snow, which a lot of people are, I think a lot of people agree that this is just a, a pinnacle of Spock's work, largely because of the bookend tracks, which are just mammoth. I mean, perfect. at the end of the day, is pretty much a perfect epic, prog epic to, in anybody's world. It's just yep. from from the uh, intro to the outro, it's just per sheer perfection. And then you've got The Great Nothing, which is like maybe a little 20, too mammoth for most most people to get through their heads in one or two listenings yeah, it's 27 minutes of perfection it's just wow. there's uh, there is not a bum note there's nothing i would change <laughs> so good okay. yeah maybe it's a little past a lot of people's attention span but you're right it's those book ending of epics so smart so perfect mm -hmm. but that doesn't work unless the songs in the middle are good you know, yeah, and for me, you know? surprisingly, Revelations one of again one of my top Spock songs ever. I just yeah. uh, Annual's wife also she loves that one, and it, I just love that you know kind of sound garden, just crunchy thing yeah. offset with the very jazzy uh, verses. Uh, just brilliant thoughts part two. Wow, what what a great one on a Sunday, nice pop hit, and Beautiful. goodbye to yesterday. Actually, like I, that's just one of the nicest ballads I think they've got. Yeah, it's it's just a well balanced album. It's got a little bit of everything, and uh, yeah, I understand why people have it at number one. If it wasn't for my weird obsessive love for the kindness of strangers, it certainly would be my number one. But you know mm -hmm. how it is when you you know look back at a band you you've been enjoying for a long, long time. The album that first got you, man. You know what I mean? That one that that, that and that was. Uh, that was the good don't last off of that album. So right. that's my one. But I get I get five being uh, probably, you know, subjectively their best album. It is perfect. Mm -hmm. And uh, as such, we're going to put the final cherry here. And five and five. Here we go. We're going to complete this out. Well, we looky time. there, boys and girls. That's kind of <laughs> weird. Yeah, can we Only get five and ten? Point? Does anybody deserve a promotion up from four star? Um, well, you I mean, I would put I, I would, would put day for night up higher, but I know you've got it lower, so that's that's your call. I would put the light up a little higher, maybe. Mm. Ah, yeah, actually, I think this feels right. This feels like we're not uh, tampering with it too bad. Yeah. Uh, that's an actual and real assessment. Look at that, boys and girls, of the Spock's Beard discography. Good with it. Yeah. Well, for those of you keeping score, uh, my, let me just run down mine. I had Be Kindness of Strangers at one, uh, five at number two, then Snow, Beware of Darkness, Brief Nocturnes at five, The Light at six, Oblivion Particle at seven, uh, ten at eight. Day for night at nine, noise floor at 10. No, the other way around. I changed it at the last minute. Feel euphoria at 11, octane at 12, and the self titled at 13. So nice. we were oddly in agreement on quite a few things there. Quite a few, just one or two off. Um, yeah. So that, that, that feels right. You know, I think that final 
ranking you've got there looks good. Yeah. Yeah, it feels, and, uh, it feels good, man, and I'm going to post that, and that's that's definitive. Uh, you know, this isn't opinion. That's absolutely the correct uh, ranking for them. <laughs> you do that, yeah. <laughs> yes, because prog fans never disagree about anything. No, ever. yeah, no. <laughs> and, you know, I mean, this this really is just our homage to this amazing band, and, and you know, we really hope that they do continue in some form. You know, Rio's got some good energy off of his great solo album yeah. that came out. Pattern Seeking Animals are just just killing it. Um, they're doing really great. And, of course, Neil is, you know, in, in a class of his own with the Neil Morse band and everything else that he's cooking up. But as I said earlier at the start, you know, I would hope with yeah. with this amazing legacy here, I mean, to me, they really deserve – a final closure of whether it's a yeah. tour or a show or or something uh because there's just too much amazing music here i think to to not do uh just a final blowout because all the members are still around and, and thriving well and, and get jimmy in there as well because absolutely they, him and nick uh playing on that snow live show oh, was, was phenomenal. oh man i've seen those videos where they get out in front of the stage and they, they start hitting anything and everything if it ain't nailed down it's getting hammered by a drumstick just amazing the, yeah. the stuff that they were doing back and forth that would be a lot of fun and uh, yeah, this is, you know, this is an appeal to the powers that be. And I think you're absolutely right. We're probably talking to Alan, but uh, yeah, it would be, it would be really great if, uh, if we could have one more go around, we love Spock's beard. You know, they're one of the bands that made, well, that made everything possible that has happened over the last 20, 25 years in uh, prog rock. Uh, we owe a humongous debt of gratitude to all of them. Mm -hmm. And uh, and that's why I wanted to do this with you and kind of, you know, pay homage to them and their greatness. Um, speaking of greatness, I, I just want to end this by saying uh, uh, kudos to you. And uh, you guys have been hitting it out of the park down there at Sonic Perspective. I love the Ian Anderson interview, oh, the Jeff Downs interview. You guys are really doing some great stuff. Uh, so to all my people, check out Sonic Perspective and uh, subscribe to their YouTube channel. Check well, it thanks, out. Thanks, bro. Like, uh, and all your people are so fortunate because, I mean, you you literally take us around the world, you know, to That's Prague right. of all corners. Your encyclopedic brain of Prague uh -huh. just uh, lays me to waste. I, I no. just bow in, in honor of all that you know. I, I can't believe you've had enough hours in your lifetime to listen to everything that you listen to. I mean, you, yeah, you really know it. Man. A lot. <laughs> I listen to a little bit too much. Uh, I don't know how in the world my wife puts up with me, but, uh, you know, like you, obviously we married uh, way above our pay grades. So, you know, not going to complain about that. Anyway, I'm going to post this one last time. So you, you guys can see the final results of the Spock's beard ranking. Oh, what a band. I love them. I love you guys. Scott, thank you for being here. Thank you, Scott. Um, this, was, this was a lot of fun. Uh, maybe Absolutely. we'll do it again one of these days. Absolutely. We'll, we'll find something else to geek out about. Yeah, we will. Anyway, thanks, everybody, for sticking around. I'll see you soon. And this now. <laughs>